Hello, please welcome a man who's had eight Soleros in eight days, but non no Soleros for about three weeks before that. It's Richard Herring. Hello, welcome to a very special, well, actually not very special, uh, Wednesday night sort of Rahalastapa. Rahalastapa. Oh, sorry, I've messed it up. I welcome to Richard Herring's Lockdown a Second Time podcast. Um, it looks like we'll be back to five nights a week, me being drunk, playing video games. Cheers! Look how those ventriloquist dummies look through. <laughs> Hooray! Though I was hanging around with the cast of Spitting Image the other day. I'm writing for Spitting Image, like, in the most minimal way ever. None of my sketches are going to get on, I can tell you that right now. Um, old Greta Thunberg was there, people were very angry about there being a puppet of her, even though they don't know what it is yet. I don't know what it is either. It might be rubbish. Who knows? It might be offensive or it might not. Who knows? Stop getting offended by things that haven't happened yet. Uh, anyway, they all call it Rahalastapa, all the spitting image puppets. Uh, and um, yes, we are here. This is not a canon Rahalastapa, Rahalastapa, I have to tell you. This is um, by way of apologising. I don't think I've been here for the last two or three weeks, have I? Um, we're trying to catch up. We have a bit of a backlog, and so just trying to get a bit closer to broadcast. But also, I'm quite lazy. Um, and I was going to try and do one tonight, but I couldn't find anyone to do it. And, uh, you know, I thought, fuck it, I'll get drunk and uh, have some time off. I keep waking up at four o'clock in the morning, being unable to sleep. Uh, excuse me, this very gassy beer. Um, so I thought I'd take a night off, but I've been persuaded. A, my wife is doing drunk women solving crime downstairs, so she's getting drunk doing a podcast. Um, and B, some of the nerds on Twitter who have nothing else in their life but me. Um, my God, if I die or I'm sent to prison as I deserve, um, then they're really going to... We're going to lose a lot of people. It'd be worse than the Osmonds breaking up. Yes, that's my reference. Um, so I just thought I'd come and dick around. We will do a sort of Rahalastapa, Rahalastapa. Uh, but um, I haven't spent any time writing any material. I haven't spent any time preparing any questions. And it's not canon. Oh, listen to that rain coming down. Can you hear it? That's ominous. Um, it's not canon, I don't think, unless it turns out to be amazing. Which it might... I'm drunk enough to believe that that could happen. It might happen. Uh, then we might put it out as a podcast and on the YouTube channel. But I don't think so. I think this is just for you and I tonight. So we can let our hair down. Let the rain come down. Hope the rain doesn't come in through the roof and go on all our electric equipment. equipment. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll see how it's going. Uh, the news I have, the bad news, first of all, I have for you is that uh, Cheddar Cave. Oh, no, that's Rahalas, but that's fine. Uh, Cheddar Caves, that's the, uh, is that the Ring of Bells there? No, that's the Swiss village, I think. If you look in the um, water there, reflected in the water is the Swiss village or the Alpine village. I should know. I, I've worked at Cheddar Caves for a long time. Uh, the Ring of Bells is just a bit... This is Goff's Cave, I think. Um, the stuff on the roof reflected in the water. It's all fake, that. I think that whole bottom bit is fake. I mean, you know, there wasn't a pool there. So it's been put there to highlight the stuff at the top. The Ring of Bells are a little bit further on. Someone broke off half of the Ring of Bells, which was annoying, which is a line of statistics. It's a beautiful place, Cheddar Caves, and it's uh, because of COVID and general mismanagement, I think. And because none of my sitcoms set into Cheddar Gorge have come off, so I feel like I'm partly to blame. I feel if um, if they'd been successful, I could have rejuvenated my hometown, my adopted hometown, and saved it all. Um, and uh, I'm gutted. I've, I've gutted for Cheddar. It's absolutely terrible news. This is there's nothing funny about this. Um, I'm trying to think of anything funny about Cheddar Caves. There isn't. I was going to write a sitcom about um, the management at the time of my caves, who I think the, the two people in charge eventually were kind of um, caught uh, stealing money. I think like the manager would go down at lunchtime, and this may not be tr completely true, but this is what I heard, uh, with a roll of last year's tic all-inclusive tickets, and she would sell those, and when she got cash, because it was the days when people paid in cash for stuff, 
she would just pocket most of the money from the lunchtime, which you'd think. She's the manager of the caves. I mean, she wouldn't have been on a huge amount of money, but you wouldn't think that extra amount of money would make a big difference to her. When I was in charge of Jacob's Ladder, I have to say, occasionally someone would come and pay 50p to go up Jacob's Ladder rather than having the whole inclusive ticket, like, about once a week. And I would sometimes keep that 50p for myself and not give them a ticket. So I'm not blameless, but I was... <laughs> I was... I was... It was a much lower level fraud, and I needed the 50p, whether... Um, the managers needed that £3.50 or whatever they got for the whole. £5 it might have been. It might have been a tenner. God knows what it is now. But it's very sad to see Cheddar Caves go. Thank you to Tom Meeker for providing that photograph. Uh, though I haven't paid him for it. I think I think we'll just acknowledge that he took that photo. Thank you, Tom. Um, and uh, what other news have I got for you? Um, ah, this is that's not my son there. There's a funny picture I stole. also stole off the internet. Um, this is my favourite thing that's happened this week is my son has has gained some self-consciousness which only a little tiny bit uh, if he's on the potty and doing a poo which he'll do quite openly in full view of everywhere as children do he's two, he's 28 years old I got there, don't worry I got there um, he uh, if you look at him he goes don't look at me, don't look at me which I love, so it's a little bit of self-consciousness he wants to poo not in private, but without being observed. Um, don't look at me. And it's just that, it's just as it's chipped away, isn't it? The enthusiasm, the joy of the world, it's just chipped, chipped away by self-consciousness. It's a terrible, terrible step in a human being's life to become self-conscious. He's still happy to bend over and let me wipe his bum with a wet wipe. So, you know, it's not all, it's not all over. But uh, he's a very happy-go-lucky, unself-conscious individual at the moment. That is the first uh, sign uh, of that. Uh, we'll get on to the guest very soon. If you haven't, if you don't know who I'm talking to, very upset about chat and Wookie Hole still going. Of course, of course it is. Those fuckers at Wookie Hole. It's uh, Lord Bath. It wouldn't have happened under Lord Bath. He was eccentric, but he was a great man. He had, he supported the caves up to a point. Don't look at me. Yeah, it's a, it is actually a time gentleman please uh, catchphrase as well, which is a, a part of the reason I like it as well. But uh, I don't think he is aware of the reference that he's making there. And uh, I will also just say that uh, the... Oh, that's that's a bit fuzzy there. I hope that's all right for you at home. Um, the snooker Kickstarter started incredibly well. This is always the way it goes with Kickstarters. And we did do a month for this one. And uh, we should have just done two weeks because it gets done in two weeks if you do it in two weeks. Uh, it's stalled a little bit. It's just got over £10,000 today. It's not going fast enough by any means. Uh, Rahalastapa.co.uk slash Kickstarter. Um, and uh, let's see if let's see how it's going. As we speak, there's 187 people. It's 10127 now, but we're going to need to get to £20,000 to... Um, make those Panani albums, send them out. We are going to cover the costs of making all the stuff and then all the rest of the money we make from this Kickstarter will be going to help save live comedy, which, uh, if the news is anything to go by, will desperately need saving. I don't know how much we can do to save it, but we will probably donate. If we get there, it'll be at least ten, fifteen thousand pounds £15,000, something like that, to uh, a venue or two, which will be very helpful to help pay their staff and pay their costs and get them through to the other side. Um, people wanting their Punani stickers and it's a gra they're great rewards I actually thought this would fly off the shelves and may maybe make us 50 grand uh, and then I'd feel cross that I was giving it all to charity so I'd be glad if it only just makes it to 20,000 I won't feel so bad but it would be great if we could make more than 20,000 but at the moment we need to make 20,000 in order to um, for any of this to happen so uh, that is the t-shirt that's one of the t-shirts there's a I hate donkey t-shirt which you could just get without any of the snooker stuff if you're a fan of Ali and Harry's Twitch of fun which I hope you are given who's tonight's guests are on Rahalastapa it's a crossover episode uh, that's the t-shirt if you pay quite a lot of money you get a lot of stuff but that's the extra and these all this stuff is exclusive to the kickstarter the Panani, Panani albums the membership badges the little the federation of self-playing snooker little badge these T-shirts, they won't be for sale anywhere else. Uh, so if you fancy them, snap them up. Uh, let's see how much good that little pep talk has done. Nothing. No one's, no one's gone 
not a, not a single soul. We need to do like a thousand pounds a day, basically now, more or less. So uh, just a little bit under, which is not impossible, and it happened with the stone clearing. So um, at the end, people tend to get behind it. But if we can push it over fifteen in the next four or five days, that would be a massive help. So please support that if you can. If you don't want to support that, if you enjoy this Twitch channel and want me to do more on Twitch. Then we need more subscribers, really. We had quite a high number. It's gone down a fair amount. It's still enough, but um, the more people who are subscribing, the more people, have, if you just follow as well. Um, and I don't really want you to subscribe with money if you're a, with an Amazon Prime member. Um, if you, you can subscribe with money if you want. But if you're an Amazon Prime member, it would be lovely if you used your free monthly subscription and gave it to us every month or at least to someone on Twitch. There's lots of people to support. So Rahala Stapa, we are back next week with a proper one. Uh, we have Michael Ian Black, who's a fantastic American actor, comedian, writer. He's written a book, um, a letter to his son about masculinity, um, which I think uh, is probably uh, tunes in a little bit with my own book, The Problem with Men, which is uh, coming out on November the 5th, uh, in book, audio book, e-book. Um, it's, uh, it's Love Audio Week this week for all you audio files out there. You disgust me. I don't think you deserve a day, let alone a week. But um, if you look on Twitter, there are a few very brief bits of me um, reading from that book going up at the moment. We might do a special event as we get closer to that day. And for the 300th uh, podcast, we are going to turn the tables and I'm going to be interviewed by somebody else about my book and about my career and life. And that is coming up pretty soon. So next week, Michael Ian Black. Uh, you don't want to miss that. He'll be live from America. Uh, the week after that, Stevie Martin. What? Steve from the jerk and dead men don't wear plaid. Uh, no, Stevie Martin from Stevie Martin's book club and Twitch. A fantastic Twitch channel. Very, very funny improvisational comedian. I've been on her book group club thing and it's very funny. Um and uh, she does lots of other stuff as well, and sketch groups and all sort of stuff. I think she's great, so I think you're going to enjoy that one. Uh, John Cairns is coming up for his uh, yearly appearance. Oh, did I have him on twice last year? I think I might have had him on twice last year, didn't I? Um, it feels like I have to talk to him once a year from now on and uh, be slightly rude to him and not really get to the meat of what we were meant to be talking about. That feels like it's something that has to happen. I think he's one of the funniest men in the world. I love talking to him. The one we did in Winchester, which went out uh, earlier this year, I really think was one of the best Rahalastapas ever. So I'm really glad he's going to be doing one. Uh, Ed Gamble is going to be doing one. And um, yeah, I'm going to, the 300th one I'm going to be interviewed by John Robbins. Now we're going to work out. We were trying to do it live. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we might do it online somewhere. We might charge a small amount and raise money for charity. Or for ourselves, who knows? You know, maybe we should start thinking about that with six more months of not being able to work coming up. Hooray for live comedy! Hooray for anyone who manages to survive this. We'll find out if John Cairns is promoting a new series of Top Coppers. I mean, fingers crossed, I would. That will be my first question to him whether it's coming back. Um, uh, and uh, we'll see. So, look, that's number 300. So that, that I think that will take us up to us. I think if that's, um, if I'm right, oh, I can't remember. I think those, I think if we do those three before and then do John, John Robbins interviewing me on the 21st of October or thereabouts, I think that will literally be the 300th. Though I say that, but we've done about 420, actually, if you include all the Edinburgh ones, and there was loads of specials that we might as well have... There's no difference, so I don't know why we didn't number them as in the... I felt they had to be at the Leicester Square Theatre to have a number, I think, in the early days. And then, obviously, I went on tour, and that flew out the window. So there's been 100 at the Edinburgh Fringe, and um, I think maybe 19 specials. So um, it's number 300 in name only, but uh, we'll do something special with that. And please do pre-order my book if you can be asked. That would be very nice um, because um, then I can um, make some money, hopefully. You know, it'd be nice, wouldn't it, for, a first, for the first time, it'd be nice to make some money. So, look, guys, you can join in a bit in the chat room with this. Are we gonna, um, mess, I'm going to just mess around. My wife's starting a bit late, apparently. Um, her guest is... Uh, what was the... They, they're having uh, some male guests for International 
Men's Day month. He's eating tapas. We were going to watch uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey afterwards, after this, but, um, you know, I'm going to be a little bit drunk and uh, I'm going to be a bit tired. We watched Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. We're going to go and see the new Bill and Ted on Friday, so we thought we'd catch up. Now, I loved Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It was the first video I ever bought, and I watched it on video. I didn't see it at the cinema. Um, back in the 1990, early 1990s, uh, we used to rent them, and then suddenly you could buy them. It was very exciting. Um, uh, as a grown man, it's less good than I thought it was, but it's still... <laughs> It's still okay. I remember really loving that bit where he falls down the stairs and looks like he's been killed and then he's just fallen out the suit of armour. And I found it tedious this time. But I used to love that. I used to think that was brilliantly postmodern and breaking the fourth wall because it was ridiculous. Why Why did he fall out the suit of armour and then hide and then not come out earlier? It doesn't make any sense. Um, anyway, look. I'm just killing time. This isn't a real Rahela story. This isn't going in the... You know, if this goes in, in out as a podcast, it will be very much as a not an unspecial episode to annoy people. Um, we'll see. When, maybe when As It Occurs to Me finishes, we'll put this out as the Friday extra thing. Just to annoy people at home to have a... This is what Twitch is like. If you're not... If, you, if this is a podcast and you listen to the podcast... Check out twitch.tv slash RK Herring. I think it's called Amazon Gaming now or something. I don't understand what's happened to this channel. It's it's put it's pushed me to the side because I'm not a gamer except when I'm playing Stuka and that's not a game. Um and um yeah, do come out, check it out. Follow me, you'll know when I'm coming online. It's usually uh 7 30 on Mondays playing Snooker, 8 o'clock on Wednesdays, Rahel Estaba, 8 o'clock on Thursdays, Annie and Herring Switch are fun. But then there's often a little surprise, stone clear, every now and again. So it's good to follow me, at least to get that information when they bother to send out the notifications. And uh, if we're back in lockdown, I'm sure we'll start doing a bit more again. So uh, I'm always looking for new things to do. I think Annie and Herring Switch are fun is, uh, is getting somewhere. We'll see. I'm a big drunk, so um, I may be wrong. Uh, I'll probably, I'm not reading my new book. I probably will do something around the book as well. I'll do a few little events around the book. We might do a little Kickstarter special because we did that with the last one and that kind of helped. So I might do something one day next week to try and push the Kickstarter along. Uh, maybe on Tuesday, I don't know. We might do something to, prom I might be able to do little bits of a book promo. But I'm doing quite a few little bit of extra. So the audio book's going to have a podcast with me and Deborah Francis White. Uh, Alistair Green is going to read the, um, uh, the the tweets and I'm going to respond to them that are in the book and we might do some extra ones of those. I'm going to try and make the audio book very good value just in case uh, shops are shut again when the book comes out. I do predict in the book that you'll be reading it during second lockdown so I'm delighted with the way the news is going because that will prove me right and make a prediction I made back in May uh, correct. Yeah, Alistair Green I'm sure will be on rehearsed but at some point... Um, he's extremely good. It's just fitting everyone in, getting the balance of the guests right, you know. And is that insulting to suddenly have a week where I just talk to myself and my ventriloquist dummy? Is that insulting to all the many, very many talented people I haven't had on yet? Perhaps it is. But uh, maybe if I got a little bit better at organising myself, which I am now, I'm weeks ahead in terms of the guest, um, then... Um, uh, I just lost my train of thought I've been drinking beer It's all good I hope you're having a nice time There's 266 people in this room 270 um, That's not a bad number So thank you very much for tuning in Let's do this chat My guest this week is probably best known for his appearance In The Potassium Permanganate Extravaganza Where the Seven Raymonds Seminal uh, Edinburgh Fringe 1987 sketch show. Um, only a very select group who got to see that show, but I don't think the sketch show ever got any stronger than it was. Uh, when the Seven Raymonds took to uh, the St Mary's Hall stage at about 12.30pm, it wasn't the best time slot. But an average audience of six uh, on the last day of our week run uh, we uh, 
went and gave people one, gave couples one free ticket, and that was quite a clever thing to do for our young minds. And uh, we sold about thirty tickets from and got about sixty people in the audience. Try that, people. If, if there's ever an Edinburgh Fringe again, anyway, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ali Sloper. Hello, it's me, Ali Sloper. I'm the little drunk. I'm winking at it. Sit up there so people can sit up there so people can sit. What's all these? What are all these guys in the background doing? Who are they? They're your possible replacements if you don't behave. So, okay, fair enough. That's very good. So, um, love to have. Thanks for guest. I'm winking at it. Yeah. Okay, it's good. But well, you didn't say anything. Oh, I'm still winking at it. I'm. Hold on. I'm cheeky knee. You're a bit late with your mouth there. I know. I'm clear dagging. I'm clear dagging. Get them all out of the way. No one likes the same throws, Rich. Good. Get them all out of the way because we're not going to. We're not doing Ali and Herring's Twitcher. For, are we not? No. Oh, no one told me. I thought this was Ali and Herring's Twitcher. I thought you were doing a side day's look at the news. No, no. We're doing uh, Rahala Stapa. Uh, you are. Uh, look at all these guys in the background. Is that Prince William? I think it is. I think it's Prince William, Prince Harry, Ronald Reagan. Oh. Why are they all in that? Why are all those dental lookers done these sitting in a row there? I think this is a museum where when the ventriloquist dummies owners die, they send their dummies. Uh, what? They send them there to just sort of sit on a shelf. What? Just to sit on a shelf. I've forgotten the name of the place, but there's a big ventriloquist dummy museum. And that's it's sort of like, a, you know, those sarcophagus places where in Italy where you go underground and it's just loads of people's skulls. This is the... This is the vet. So, what, when you die, I'll just end up sitting next to some fucking scared looking schoolboy, don't look as dummy, rather than be doing night stuff. Yeah, maybe. Your yeah, bow tie's falling apart a bit. I don't know. Um, possibly, yeah. Unless we hand you down the generations. My daughter, I think, might be interested in taking over. Yeah, she's she likes drama. And my son's very funny. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. You heard in the box. I heard in the, I was in the box. And I heard. So I'm drinking beer tonight, unusually. Oh dear! Yeah, it was it was in a bottle originally, but now it's in a in a glass. And in in a bottle? No, in a bottle. Is a bottle of beer? Yeah, it was a bottle. Uh, uh, this was uh, well, it, what I was drinking, Budvar. I got a look good now. Yeah, but this is uh, Erdinger, I think it's called. I, I this was the one I was drinking as a non-alcoholic beer, and I quite liked it. And I tried the alcoholic one, and it's good. Oh, why aren't you talking? I oh, just I thought you were going to say something. I was literally just drinking from a bottle, from that would a glass that would have been a perfect time for you just to chip in and say. Something. I didn't want to be rude. You always accuse me of talking over you, Richard. You do talk over me. I don't ever talk over you. You do. You talk over me. Someone on YouTube said I don't talk over you. I just talk after you. No, well they're wrong. You talk over me, and it's irritating for the people at home. So let's just okay. I'll try and I'll try. I was trying to leave the gap. Fair enough. So, Ali, what do you remember of the um, 1987? Uh, I mean, there's something I don't really want to talk about. And maybe if we're going to talk about it, we shouldn't talk about it right at the start of the podcast. Because it's like a, you know, that that's, this is the kind of thing. Usually we do lots of banter and then we get to the, the serious story about the sexual assault. And, um, you know, that would be the 40 minute point. Oh, you're actually at the 40 minute point after all we went on. I was just entertaining the people at home. Well, yeah, I don't know if you were. Well, you can say that. To less, there's less people here now than there were when we started. So people have tuned in, <laughs> hoping it's going to be a good guest. Found out it's you, and then, and then gone away. Well, actually, I lost Richard. They're going to lose some wonderful improvised conversation between two wonderful raconteurs and wits. Well, that's true. So what do you remember of the 1987... Uh, it wasn't even the Oxford Review, wasn't it? It wasn't the Oxford Review, Richard. You, you were in the... the you, I don't know, you'd, you, you'd done quite well in your first year at university and uh, some people wanted you to the Oxford Review. The David Schneider, uh, the star of Mission Impossible. I think he plays a train driver in Mission Impossible, yes, I know. He, um... Yeah, sorry, I, th I, th I was going to speak. I realised you were talking. Yeah, he, um... He wanted to do the Oxford Review. He managed to uh, convince them that he should do the Oxford Review. So the Seven Raymonds, you, Stuart, uh, Emma, uh, Nike, Richard Canning, and uh, Joe Renshaw, and, although there was some 
There was some controversy, wasn't there? At the top. Yeah, we did. It all kind of went a bit pear shaped that Edinburgh. Yeah, for us, for the seven Raymonds. Though we did carry on with a different cast. Um, the idea was that it was like the two Ronnies, but it was seven people who got together to do a comedy group, and but they were all called Raymond. So it was the seven, like the two Ronnies, the seven Raymonds. It's very funny, and that was probably the funniest thing in the entire sketch show. So you can imagine how funny it was just from that. And there were six of us as well, so that was the additional joke. And then it was five of us, and so it was even funny when there were five of us. It was very funny, Richard. No one's denying that. Um, got the gear. Yeah, good. You did it when I, that was just as I was drinking. How did you do that? It was amazing. Should I do the alphabet? Yeah, go on, dude. Hey, Jamie, 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 Sorry, I had something that's flown in my mouth there. Must have been the rain must have got in your mouth. Ah, oh, that is the rain got in my mouth. Uh, so, yo, yeah, you did a very funny sketch. Um, actually, the, I've got the... Uh, I've got my collection. It's all fallen apart a bit. This is the scrapbook I kept. Uh, it's all fallen apart. The cover's fallen off. Uh, all the sketches and drama I did at Oxford. It's incredibly uh, embarrassing and pathetic. Uh, but... Um, Oh, in fact, I've literally just turned to the right page straight away. This is the Venturisk sketch written by me. I used to sign um, my name as... Just have a little... I don't want to hold this up because it's all going to fall apart. I used to sign my name as a fish. I've just dropped it. It's, it's, it's all stuck in with sellotape. Oh, no, everything's falling out. Hold on, you just go down there, Ali. Loads of lovely bits have fallen out. There it is. I used to sign my name as a little fish, meaning herring. Uh, so I was Derek. Don't remember that. And there was a heckler played by Mike Cosgrave. Uh, and uh, this is very interesting, Richard. This isn't really neat talking about my life, is it? Well, this is your. This is what you're best known for, being in this sketch that uh, maybe ten people saw. Uh, I'll, it's very difficult to read. It's faded. Hello, my name is Derek Oakley, and I'm going to do an act which is a bit of a first for the workshop. Oh, this is the, so this is literally the first time. There's the thing called the Oxford Review Workshop, so this is before Edinburgh. A ventriloquist act. My interest in this amazing and highly amusing art. Oh, get on with it. I'm getting on with it. You interrupted me stopping getting on with it. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, a highly amusing act began when my grandfather gave me a couple of ventriloquist dummies. Incidentally, a dummy is the doll we use uh, in the act. Not, of course, as you might have thought, a very silly person. So it was, it was deliberately meant to be not funny. Okay, I'm being, I'm, I'm winking at it. There, that's why I'm winking. Uh, are you now? Is that what you're doing? Yes. Um. Uh, something as well. Of course, I have my heroes. Roger de Courcy is one, but naturally, my all-time hero is Keith Harris, an absolute genius. So that was a little bit of uh, student sarcasm there. I don't think any of that made it into the Edinburgh show version. Without any further ado, here's my act. Um, Hi, kids. Have you seen my little chum, Ali? I said, have you seen Ali? I wonder where he could be. Looks around, turns to turns back to audience, and in the same voice says, I'm in the box. So I'm not even in this. This is just you. Yeah, the joke was, I would do that. I'd turn around and go, I'm in the box. And I wouldn't even try and do a different voice around that. So it's actually ridiculous that you wouldn't even try to do a different voice. Why didn't you just have me talk? Because I thought it would freak people out if, if they knew you could really talk. So... No, it was very much under using my skills, Richard. It's, you know, it should... Uh, I should have then... You should have just done this act. Well, I thought it was subverting, you know, it's breaking the... It's like Bill and Ted breaking the fourth wall, isn't it? By by doing... So I, to basically I would turn around... And this is... This is how I started as a comedian. Um, so... I'm in the box. Oh, did you hear that, children? What did he say? And then I turn around and go, I said I'm in the box. Uh, he, oh, he said he's in the box. I wonder if he could mean this box. Let's have a look. And I open the box. Ah, oh, yes, here he is, the cheeky young, young, young rapscallion. Come on, Ali, get out of the box. And then I'd hide behind the lid of the box and and say, I don't want to come out of the box. Oh, come on. No, I don't want to. You've got to because all the boys and girls want to see you. So then I've got him out of the box. Say hello to everyone, Ali. Um, and then Ali would say nothing. This is terrible for me. This is a terrible sketch for me. I know you're not in it very much. You don't really do much. Uh, come on, before you do, but before you say anything, I just want to wipe my nose a minute. And then I get hanky and I wipe my nose. And then I go, and then it would go, hello, boys and girls. Uh, how are you, Ali? Ali says nothing, but then indicates nothing. Oh, and, uh, sorry. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? That's that's basically how this sketch would go. I mean, we could do the whole thing. 
Nothing else is going on, is it? I can't see because all the papers disintegrated. Uh, what have you been up to this week? Hold on, I've just got to put this paper bag on my head for a second. So then I start to put a blag, a blag on my second. And then Mike Cosgrove was a heckling the He said, oh, get off this is shit. Every time Ali gets to say anything, you somehow contrive to cover your mouth. So we can't see it's you, it's moving or not. Admittedly, it's very cunningly done. But nevertheless, this is a sham. So you think I'm cheating? In a word, yes, I do think you're cheating. It's just absolutely brilliant. Well, Ali, what do you think of that? Uh, and, and Ali pulled it. You, then you got to do your hair trick. That's what you did. Yeah. Well, if that's the way uh, it's going to be, we'll close my mouth tight shut and Ali will talk. Watch this and believe. Uh, hello, Ali. And then a voice from behind the curtain. Hello, Derek. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? Mustn't grumble. There's someone back there in the curtain. He's not even tidying properly. Look, you can see him moving. He's just shouting out. This is awful. I paid good money to come in here. And, I, and then I said, I'll give you money if you come up here. And he said, oh, thanks very much and came up. Yes, you're right. There is someone there, but it's not like you think. Look, it's Sally. The brains behind the outfit. In fact, it's her. She's been make, making both me and Ali talk. But Sally has a hanky over his mouth. And then the heckler says, oh, look, she's got a hanky over his mouth, her mouth as well. This is shit. I mean, the heckler was right in a way. The heckler was right in a way. The heckler was right in a way. Now it's all falling. That bit's falling out. It's all falling apart. Oh. Happy day. So that was the sketch, Ali, that we did. Yeah. What, what's happened to you? Why are you going down there? Just on the road. I'm just down here. I mean, it's no... Look, we're not get, gaining anything by you not being there. I've still got to do the... What are you talking about? I've still got to do... You just thought... What? What's going on? It's fine, Ali. That's fine. Um, so it all started that year. We had quite a year, didn't we, at the... Yeah, we stayed in the Masonic Lodge. You were very worried about losing the us. And what I was... I remember I was scared about taking you and Sally to um, Edinburgh because what if, you know, you were then relatively... You weren't even 100 years old at this point. You were 90-something year old. Yeah, I was a youngster. Oh, I had my time at the Thringe, Richard, the lead me. There was a lot of thunder they had late at night. Yep, well, we, well, we might get on to that later on. Uh, but we stayed in the Masonic Lodge. One night I was crying. I can't say the name of the other person because he's taken out a court order saying we're not allowed to say it anymore. But that particular individual, yeah, Stuart Lee. No, we're not allowed to say it. You're not allowed to say it. I can say it. Well, that's true. There's no quarter against you. I've just been said, yeah, you just said you can't say it, that I can say it. Stuart, uh, Stuart Lee. Stuart Lee. No, um, this person. I'm going to be in so much trouble if he watches this. He is watching it, Richie. He watches everything you do. Ever more jealous every time. He does, doesn't he? It's weird, isn't it? You'd think it would be the other way around. Yeah. But uh, no, it's weird. Um, He won't be happy until you absolutely died in the gutter, Richard. That's the thing. He won't be able to enjoy his success unless you had totally failed. That, I think that's true. I mean, certainly it would be true the other way around. That's it. That is the... Um... So, uh, if I were to become successful, what, what, do you were to become successful? Yeah, so if you, so you weren't just sitting in your attic playing with a doll in front of an increasingly, oh no, 200, no, 200, thought, less than 240 people now, which has gone down. They're very persistent people, those 240, though, aren't they? Are they, or they're just a distant 240 are tuned into two minutes and are going to tune out again? We'll never know. That's the thing, we'll never find out about that. Um... But yes, uh, there was an incident, Richard, and we apologised, we talked about it a lot. Uh, I was ranking at it. Yes, that's very good. Don't, I mean, don't, if you're apologising, don't do a, a winking, wanking pun in the middle of it. Uh, you may well sit there with your mouth open. I was, I was just I was aghast at what was going on. Then it was a wonderful time, Richard. You had fun, didn't you? I don't know. Did I have fun? I think I was crying. I was. Why was I crying myself to sleep? Oh, because you had there was attractions. There was what? There was attractions within the group, Richard, and you'd had a nice time. And then the people you didn't like turned up, and then uh, the girl you lost your virginity was in the group. Yeah, it was a complicated system, right? Yeah, I'd uh, I'd had a very brief fling with one of the other cast members, Emma Kennedy, not Emma Kennedy. And uh, that didn't help things. <sighs> help the illusion of the dignity. I mean, yes, if you could, look, let, this isn't meant to be going into all of that. This is meant to be a look at your career and your life. And just, we talked about that because that's what you're best known for. Okay. But obviously I was sad. I was crying. You know, it was a stressful time. We were young. We were hopeful. We hoped people would come and see our shows. We were 
hoping we might be discovered, get onto TV. Yeah. Didn't work out, did it? It didn't work out then, but, you know, careful what you wish for, Ali, because it might come true. Really? Uh, I wish that two 18-year-old twins would have a threesome with me. Careful what you wish for, Ali. It might come true. I hope it does come true. You might find it's not as good as you think. Also, it's, it's unpleasantly incestuous, isn't it? That's what I get off on. And apparently, if you look at Thornhub, so does no teagle by the sound of it. Yeah, I don't understand that. No, yeah, well, you're the third earth for not wanting to see sisters having sex with each other. I'm not sure I am the pervert because of that. I don't want to see that. I think it's it makes me feel sad. <laughs> Some people like to feel sad, Richard. Some people like to masturbate and feel sad. Look, we're not here to talk about masturbating. We've just gone to masturbating because of that. And uh, it's inappropriate. Um, I'll ask you some emergency questions. Let's just to try and get this out of the way. Uh, Steve Burnett says, my 18-year-old nephews are up for it, Ali. What do you think? Yeah, well, I'm 128. You've got to take it where you can get it. At least they'll be young, 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 young. That's all that matters in this life, isn't it, Richard? Young. I don't think it is. I think, um, you know, the the wonderful thing about being with someone a little older, 53 maybe, is, you know, they've lived a life. They've Maybe, you know, their, their body's a bit worn and they just want to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Young is better. Right. Um. Let's ask you a random emergency question. What is your favourite direction on a compass, Ali? Is that a genuine question? That is a dead genuine. <laughs> That's the first question. What is my favourite direction on a compass? What a stupid ducking question that is. Do people sit it duck and genuinely, genuinely answer these things, Richard? Yeah, I think they do. You know, I think the thing is, usually my guests have a great deal of respect for me. What I've noticed a lot with a lot of the guests we've had, I've had a lot of younger comedians on, uh, not because what you are like, oh, yeah. not because of that, because I'm trying to, you know, I'm I'm supportive of the industry. And so I, quite a few uh, of these young comedians, I was the first stand up they ever saw. I think that's happened two or three times. Bill Al Zaffa was on. He was um, he'd asked, he'd said he couldn't afford to come to the show and I'd give him a free ticket. Oh, don't keep on going on about that. I'm just a great guy because, you know, if people can't afford to come to the shows, I'll get them in. It was nice that that paid back so much, you know, that I look like such a great guy on my own podcast. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of these youngsters look up to me, even the people who are the same generation as me who've done much better than me, they kind of admire my persistence, I think. Do you think so? Um, well, I don't know, but, you know, I think they... They admire me for keeping it real. Do you think, or do they, they just think it's a bit sad that you haven't done that well and you now do a show in your attic with a, a tatty nashi donny that he, one of his eyes is closed because he's I'm winking at it. Um, I think I think the form, I think it's not the sad one. I think it's the the form one. I think they think I'm cool. Uh, what is your favourite direction on the compass? I don't have a favourite direction on the compass. Which is really, well, it's north, I suppose. It's a very uh, Obvious answer, north. That's everyone's way. Oh, it's how a compass works, isn't it? If it wasn't the magnetic north, where would we do that the compasses? We'd be screwed. See, you know, the thing about these emergency questions is they do lead to some conversation. You wouldn't, I didn't ever imagine I'd be discussing compasses with you, Ali. Yeah, I, I guess. I never thought I'd either. So I suppose the emergency questions are quite good. Yeah. Um, Ali, have you ever had a wank in a jacuzzi? Or non-branded hot tub, because the jacuzzi is a brand name, of course. Uh, no, Richard, I've never been in a jacuzzi. I wonder if you can guess why. Um, I guess they didn't have jacuzzis when you were a young man. Richard, I need a tater and wood. If I get in a jacuzzi, dang, that's it. I'm, hot, I'm barely holding it together as it is. I'm not going to sit in a load of dawdling hot water. What if there's two 18-year-old twins in there? Even then, Richard, not worth dying for. Fair enough. Have you ever had a wank in a jacuzzi? I'm not prepared to answer that question. Why did you come up with that question? Why is it all about wanking? It's your question. I probably have had a wank in a jacuzzi. Why wouldn't... Why the, I think the point is, if I haven't... Oh, you, know, you don't know if you have. Well, I don't know if I have. I wasn't expecting the tables to be turned on me like this. Okay. I don't know if I have. What I think the reason I asked that question is because you've had a wank in the jacuzzi. That's the reason you asked it. No, it's because when you're in there, what is the point? 
of the jacuzzi, all that water flying around, going up your arsehole and everything. And there's, you know, you might be in sitting with other people and there's water going up your arsehole. What are you meant to be thinking? Not, you shouldn't be wanking if there are other people in there. Not if there are other people in there, but, you know, afterwards when they've gone home. You disgust me. <laughs> the, next, the next question is, why don't you wash water? Because I, cause I can't, I, cause if I get water on the old eye, I know these aren't great questions for you. Um, let's try something else. This is the original emergency questions book. Um, there is the uh, newer one available in shops. This is available from gofasterstripe.com. You can buy all three emergency questions for £20. That's pretty good value, my fine friends. Um, what is the most inappropriate person you've ever had a sex dream about, Ali? Oh, thank God's sake, Richard. I don't, I told you, I don't really dream. The only thing I dream about is drugs from the 1890s because the inside of my head is made out of paper and that's all I can see. I can't sleep. I always have one eye open. I'm always awake, Richard. I've been awake for 128 years. Sometimes I daydream a little bit about dying about finally being allowed to leave this mortal coil or at least get out of my fucking box but i don't have sex dreams well good that i could dream richard oh what a grave new world that would be what grave new world grave grave my answer to that is weirdly tv's emma kennedy even in the imaginary dreamscape we could not get aroused by each other's mutually hideous bodies and slash personalities and it was like stuffing a marshmallow into a letterbox, but not as sexy. Yeah, I vaguely remember that dream. I did have a sex dream about Emma Kennedy. Yeah, this is turning into a very sexy time, isn't it? Having some sexy, sexy times. Let's try and see if we can find one that isn't um, isn't a sexy question. Yeah, I know we could, should we talk a little bit? Pardon? Should we talk a little about me? No, I don't think so. I think we'll do some emergency questions. See what Because it's nice to be able to... What I like about having you here, yes? is it's nice to have someone to knock ideas back and forth with, isn't it? You know, if it's just me on my own, it's just my own brain. But with two brains together, yes, you might come up with something that will spin off to something else and it wouldn't have happened if we weren't working together. Yes, I suppose that's true. Um, Good Night Sweetheart is an amazing but flawed sitcom. Could you please give a five-minute speech pointing out some of the flaws? Well, I think you've done that enough, Richard, in your time. I don't think there's anything I can add to the many things you have said about this sitcom, uh, except there weren't enough then to look as done these in it. What well, about doing Goodnight Sweetheart, that you go back and you are a then to dummy in the other reality? Yeah. And that somehow stops Hitler. <laughs> that could work. That could be good. Have you ever met Nicholas Linders? I've never done that fucking anyone, Richard. I live in a box. I live in a box. I've met you. I've seen Stuart Lee. That's very exciting. I didn't realise at the time. No one would have guessed he would have gone to do the successful one. Don't talk about him. I thought he'd be in prison by now for the stuff he made me do. Well, you know, he could be. If we if we went to the police, he could be. Well, we could. Uh, we, the both of us can corroborate, can't we? Yeah. We, so do you think I should go? We should go in the police station together, yeah? Uh, if they wouldn't believe me, if you go, well, I was there as well. And uh, I can confirm that 100% happened. I think if that happened, they would have to take us seriously, right? Yeah. So we could bring him down. Yeah. Worth thinking about. Um, what is your favourite punchline? Oh, well, I didn't get to do any in your sketch, did I? I didn't get a fucking sneak. What's your, what's your favourite... Um, why are you moving your mouth? Well, there's just a moment where your mouth was coloured. I thought I'd make the hay, hay you the sun shone. Um... I was just scratching my face. Yeah, I saw I saw you scratching your face. This is a bit like the sketch, isn't it? It's a bit like the sketch. What do you mean? Well, you're covering your mouth. Well, you know, I can cover my mouth because it's you that's speaking. Look, I can do that. And yeah, it's true. Why does it sound a bit like I'm behind the book, Richard? I don't know. That's how clever you are. You can change your voice. Uh, you're very, you're a very impressive dummy. Uh, my favourite punchline to a joke is lemon entry, my dear Watson. Yes, I like that one. Uh, I like uh, it's said to make sure he's dead or something like that. Isn't it? That one I like. I don't really remember the jokes, Richard. I'm a little drunk. I'm cheeky knee. You've got to move your mouth when you say it, not afterwards. I'm cheeky knee. I'm winking at it. Okay. Um, should we get Sally out here as well? Gonna be very difficult for you to have the drink. If you do that. Um, 
we'll have Sally out quickly and then we can talk to, to both of you about your origin story as well together. I think people are interested to know how you met. That's the main thing I think of having you on yours. Well, I guess we can talk about that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome... Um, she's best known for her appearance in The Seven Raymonds, The Potassium and Permanganate Extravaganza, KMN04. Here she is. It's Sally Sloper, ladies and Hello, dear Sally Sloper. Okay. I'm a little drunk. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, uh, you're both a little drunk. Yes, I did that joke first. I know. Oh, so we're trying to say something to interrupt. So you interrupt me, Richard, don't worry. You're a man on the London, on Houston, then sneaking over me. Not just sneaking over you, eh? No, come on, there's no need for that kind of uh, innuendo. In your endo. <laughs> don't you start, Sally. I was trying to be sensible. Okay, fair enough. Um, I much prefer you, Sally. Your mouth works much better than Ali's. Yes, I know. And the Sotarian novel. Hold on, I'm trying to link at it. Uh, hold on, I'll get there. I'm winking. I was winking at it. I was winking at it. It's just hard to do the controls at the same time. Fair enough. So uh, how did you guys meet and get together? That is the question that most people... When I, when I went on Twitter today, said we're going to interview Ali and Sally, the question that most people <laughs> wanted to know the answer to... And when I say most people... One person was interested. Yes. Was, uh, yeah, it's confusing. Don't look at the pictures, Richard, because we're the other way around. I know, that could confuse me. Yes, don't look at the, don't look at the screen, Richard. Just talk to, look at us when you're talking to you. Look at us. I, I suppose that's the, the right thing to do. How did you two meet? Well, we were made, Richard. I, we, we were always been together. I was made first. Thy God. Your, my great granddad was God. Well, in in Dental Chris Donny turns, he created me in his own image. Did he, is he is this one? He, did he look like you? Yeah. Did he have a purple suit on? Yeah. Did he have a little bow tie that was falling apart? Yeah. Did he have red cheeks and a red nose, but a lot of the red on the nose had come off and was there was skin underneath? Yes, he did have all those things. Richard. Did he have one drooping eyelid? Yes, he did. And he made me in his image. And it was his mouth. Gaping white, yes it was. Just anything you say, I'm going to say yes it was. Did he have little buttons on his in his waistcoat? Yes he did. Was he? Oh, excuse me. Ah, oh, oh, just a little. Oh, sorry, I'm a little drunk. Um, was he uh, two foot high? Yeah, no, he wasn't. He was, he was in his, his high foot something. She was uh, old herring. I was going to say Jeffrey Herring, that was your granddad. I've forgotten your great-granddad's name. Can you remember Richard? Uh, yeah, of course I can. It's my great-granddad. So you should know as well, because he created you. He's God. Yeah. Just to slip my mind for a second. Thomas, I think. Thomas Herring, is it? You know, you, you met him. I never. Well, I never met him. He died in 1956. I never met him. You could still know his name. Yeah, Thomas, I guess. I've had a couple of drinks. I can't. I, I can't remember. Okay, I can't remember. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's weird sometimes how two people can forget the same thing. So I was made. Uh, Sally didn't even exist at this point. That's true. I, I didn't exist yet in the physical form. And uh, yeah, what happened then? And uh, then your granddad, the great granddad, took the. It was like the Adam and Eve story a bit. Uh, God created me in His image, and He took my rid. You what? My rid. Took your what? My rib. You took my rib. Oh, your rib. Yeah. And when I say rib, I mean what? When you say what? When I say rib, I mean he took some pate and that was left over from naked knee, and he made her. And the taint and stuff. Same. That's the same taint. And uh, the hair comes from the same source. What? what where did the hair come from? Is it real? Oh God! Is it real hair? Oh, I think it probably is just hair. Some on Victorian's hair, isn't it? <laughs> oh, God. I never thought of that. I think that's real hair on there. Ugh. I mean, it's likely to be. What else have they put on? It is. It looks like real. That's the. I think that's the dead hair of a Victorian. I mean, it's the hair of the dead Victorian. Someone in uh, Chimpo Tot in the chat room is suggesting it's pubic hair. You think. <laughs> Do you think your great granddad used his own pubic hair to stick on my head? Well, I mean, yours looks more like pubes than uh, Sally. Sally looks like it might be real hair. Oh. I hadn't really ever thought that. Anyway, he made me, then he made her, and to the night housekeeper and play sexual play thing. 
I don't think he did. And I think that's I think that's what he is aiming for. The fact you haven't lived up to your half of the bargain is not my fault. And did you go to eat the apple from the tree and then you had to be expunged? No, it wasn't that much like having them either, Richard, though. My son did kill my other son. They were twins as well. It's a bit weird. You had twin sons and that's now your obsession. Yes, I suppose it is. But one of them killed the other, so it's a traumatic thing. Well, it's not quite how I remember it, Richard, that they basically met in 1892. We've been working together ever since, though. Since you've taken over, it seems to have become rather more the early slope of the show, even though I'm the, clearly the more talented and uh, the uh, uh, trittier, sexier, more together member of the team. I still hold together pretty well, and uh, I have all my novels, which can't be said. Oh, you have all you want, my novels, which can't be said of Ali. I've got all my novels, and my mouth doesn't go through the look. I can open my mouth. It's shut on its own. Can you shut your mouth, Ali? On your own? That was Richard doing it. <laughs> um... It's going to be hard for me to ask you both the most questions because uh, I've got I guess your ability. You've been in that box a long time. It's difficult for you guys to sit up. Have we, how long have we been going? Fucking hell, 50 minutes. And the wrath of it was you, Richard. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's nice to do the Twitch channel. It's nice to keep the Twitch channel going uh, and to do special content for the people who watch Twitch. They 240, 50, 50 people um, that will never be seen by the other people. I think that's a good idea, Richard, because I think if it was seen by your regular fans, that when I mean, there's tens of thousands of people who listen to podcasts, yes, I think if this went out to the more normal people, I think they might start going off to you a bit. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, just a little bit. I think they'd still listen, but, you know, with slight air of disgust. Okay. I don't agree, Richard. I think this could be your break into the big time. Into the what? The big time. I think you could get into the big time with this. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Um, can I ask you some emergency questions, uh, Sally? Well, of course. Have you ever seen a ghost, Sally? Well, yeah, I have seen ghosts. I think, in a way, are me and Ali not ghosts? We're inanimate objects that come to life. No one can explain how we speak, how we move. It's beyond science, Richard, isn't it? And science can't understand. I can wink if I, if, you know, if you really put your mind to it. Uh, and yet, if you look inside me, there's no organs. I'd like to put an organ in you. Yeah, very funny. Um, there's no blood. There's no bones. And yet here I am, as animated as someone who can move their head out and not much else. So, am I not a ghost, Richard? I suppose you are. And in a way, just philosophically speaking, yeah. Sorry, am I boring you? Not really. Um, just... You know, just thinking about how, where my life's gone. Yeah, fair enough. Philosophically speaking, it was just when you mentioned philosophy that just made me think, oh, fuck. Is this it? This is it, Richard. This is as good as it's going to get for you know. Um, you know, in a way, I was made by dead hands. What? You're made by dead hands. The hands that made you are now dead. Well, not everything made you. Yeah, they're gone. Yet here I still am. So, am I not the ghost of your great granddad? Sort of. And your grandma, who made... Uh, your nana, I'm sorry, who made this beautiful blue replacement coat for me. This dress. Yes, because underneath it's the original... There's an original dress that obviously decided was too dilapidated. I don't know how Ali got away without having anything made, but there's... Under there, I don't want to show them your ankles. Oh, a little shot of ankles. I know a couple of guys will have shot off at that. Um, there is another... There's a, a Victorian dress. Yes, so... They're all gone, Richard. That their work lives on, and you one day got to be gone too. Probably pretty soon. Though you're drinking all that beer and looking after yourself. I've been for a couple of runs this week. I know it's too a little too late. <coughs> Hand over your mouth, Richard, and your cough. It's difficult. I don't want to get COVID. Not at my age. <coughs> That's just unpleasant. I want to. I want to drink a beer, but I can't get there now. Well, you know, that's what I'm saying. I have seen a ghost. Uh, Ali, yeah, there's a question I meant to ask you. Yeah, have you ever tried to suck your own cock? Well, I don't need to. I got someone. Oh, I got so many groupies, and my wife trying to suck. Have you tried? I'll try it now. 
Can't do it, Richard. My duck's too straight. Good. Um, well, it's been a lot of fun uh, talking to you, Sally. Thank you. I just wanted to talk to you about that those early days and uh, what it was like. What was it like in the 1890s? Was it? Was it? Do you think it was better then than now? No, it was shit, Richard. Awful. Even though it is very shit now, and uh, you lot have managed to suck off a pretty good thing by the ingredient lentil. Still better than in the 1890s and going up fucking chimneys. I don't think people were going up chimneys in the 1890s, were they? They were. They were putting up statues to Edward Coughlin. It was a fucking terrible time to be alive, and I'm glad I lived to see the world get better, even if it's then going to get much worse. It's got worse a couple of times. It has got worse a couple of times, that's how. Yeah, that's true. It just goes in cycles. You see it? The dad people will take over her it. It won't work because they're all mental. Then good people will come. People will forget that they're the good people. Then go to the dad people. Then eventually all the resources of the earth will be used up and you'll all suffocate to death. But me and Ali will still be here, sitting in this attic, waiting they're an alien to find us and give us a voice. Wow, well, it's gone darker as I, you know, as it should do at the 56 minute point. Um, I'll put you down, at Sally, because I really wanted some beer. But thank you for coming. Sorry, you know, I don't usually, I'm not usually so uh, dismissive of my guests, but uh, I just want to have a little bit more beer. And uh, yeah, well, I hope you've enjoyed the show. It's been good having you on, Ali. You know, it's nice to do a bit of extra. We're doing the show tomorrow, aren't we? Yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with Ali and Herring's Twitch are done. Uh, 8 o'clock uh, on the same channel, twitch.tv slash Herring. You take a sideways look at the news and then I come in and ruin it with my comedy jokes. It's very funny. I think it's funny. There's a whole host of characters. Here's Hoary Horse, for example. Uh, I don't know what she's saying. Will I be on the uh, tomorrow's episode? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even sure Brian the Wasp is going to be on tomorrow. I know he's uh, the most unpopular character. He's just, he's literally a wasp that I found on my desk and then in, incorporated into the show. It's amazing we've managed to make that last for seven or eight weeks. Yeah. Uh, I don't want a blowjob from a horse. I don't care. Well, I don't care if you've got a special offer on. COVID special offer, five quid. Well, let's talk about it after it's off air. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we'll be back tomorrow. We'll be talking, uh, we'll be doing a uh, Twitch of fun. It's going to get ever more complex. We're going to try and end on a song tomorrow. Oh, we? yeah, we're going to try and do a song tomorrow. Um, and I've uh, been working on the lyrics. It won't be There won't be any music behind it tomorrow, I don't think, but we'll see. Might do the donkey song as well. Rufus T. Firefly says, don't forget only Rich and Five Puppets are allowed together now. That's true. But we just we can sort of send them in and out of the room. Oh, excuse me, this beer is very gassy, very gassy beer. Uh, don't forget about the kickstart. Let's see how that's getting on. Let's see uh, if people have been dashing there over the course of this hour to find out what's uh, up. Uh, where was it? Here it is. Uh, oh, it has gone up a bit. 190 backers now. Ten and a quarter thousand. That's not too bad. Um, Ten days to go. See what you can do, my friends. Rahalastaba.co.uk slash Kickstarter or go to kickstarter.com and put in snooker and you'll, it'll pretty much pop up straight away. Some lovely rewards there. I mean, look at this. Look at that beautiful T-shirt. As someone's pointed out, there are 15 Red Bulls there, which, of course, there aren't in uh, self-playing snooker. There are 10. Uh, and I guess if we could afford to have lots of colours on that T-shirt, we could have made the herring ones, uh, all the colours, white, yellow green blue brown blue pink black if you missed the snooker on monday it was incredibly exciting um you must tune into that you might think it's nonsense it's good rich i, I like it well you're in it sometimes aren't you? yeah i'm in it sometimes i like it if it wasn't for the snooker you wouldn't really be here um so if you're with um amazon prime especially go to youtube my youtube channel there's a very or look at the front page of this there's a very brief uh, description of how to link your accounts your amazon prime and your amazon gaming accounts uh, and to give us five pounds every month for no cost to yourself. It would be lovely if you did that. Um, the more people who do it, the more Twitch stuff we can do. And the less people do it, the less Twitch, Twitch stuff we'll do. So that is the social contract I'm entering into with you, my fine friends. Uh, hey, look, it's been a lovely drink with you. Has anyone got uh, a question for Ali in the chat room? Let's see. Let's see if that's uh, before we go. We'll, 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 
we let, might as well incorporate the uh, get into that and not seeing much coming up for 15 reds what bullshit is this um it's a good question stop doing it says steve burnett i don't know what that's about um where does you where do you get your crazy ideas from oh yeah, they just come to me richard i don't even know what i'm going to say next and they just open my mouth and out it pops i'm very say i'm very much the same you know the less i prepare i think the funnier i am in some ways yeah well it's a very low bar richard a very low what a very low bar a very low bar. A very low bar. Very low bar. Don't understand what you're saying. Um, uh, so it feels like a common eyes just magic. Like someone's rejected into your head and you open your mouth and out it pops. It does feel like that. And if you feel like that, and I feel like that, does that mean? Could it mean? Do you think you're just in a long line of tin vine like? Ventriloquist dummies? I mean, you know, it could be, couldn't it? We? It could be just ventriloquist dummies all the way up. And then we get back and we find the bottom ventriloquist dummy is actually controlled. There's a circle. Imagine if that was it. Uh, let's see what else we've got in the chat room. It's all whizzing by. What would Ali's puppet centipede be? Oh, if you could have, uh, do you know what? Have you, do you know the pup, the human centipede, the film The Human Centipede? I'm aware of it. Shouldn't I keep up with the trends? Uh, if you could put three puppets in a puppet centipede, which three puppets would you put in? Uh, well, it's not so bad being a puppet, is it? Because there's no thetes involved. Uh, I expect some ventricles puppets shit. Some of them are shit. All of them, for example. <laughs> I'm cheeky me. That was good. You at least got your mouth moving on that. I'm not linking at it. I think all of them is shit. Um, look, I was reading about Keith Harris in, in that sketch I did. There's no need for us to carry that on. He was a great man. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't just ventriloquise the dummies, did he, Keith Harris? That's, let's not go into that rumour about He got his old fella. There's no need to bring that up. He's, he's died. Let him rest in peace. Like we, like Jimmy Savile. Let Jimmy Savile rest in peace. Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm not saying he was like Jimmy Savile. A little bit. No, not even a little bit. Um... So who would be in you? Which which? So I'd have Lord the Lord the Duck. I'd have me at the front, and I'd have Hoary Horse right behind me, licking my anus for five quid. You seem to know the prices. Is it five pounds for rimming? Yeah. For, well, from the soft tongue of a of a cloth horse, it's nice. Is it <laughs> worth a fiver? Do you, when you pay the hoary horse, you pay in modern money or in old Victorian money? Well, I guess five Victorian pounds is probably worth more than five pounds now, isn't it? Probably is. Um, uh, English pig dog goes from nookie at the front, cuddles at the back. Um, Ali says, Ali fan 2020. Ali snog, marry, kill. Donkey, Brian and hoary horse. I would definitely kill donkey. I might do that anyway. I would snog uh, hoary horse. And I'd marry Brian the Wasp because he's already dead, and so I could get all of his money in the in his will. Do you think he's got much money, Brian Wasp? Mm, yes, <laughs> you do think he has. Yes, I think he's a very successful entertainer. He's been on here a lot of times, hasn't he? Yeah, we'll all, we will start paying you all soon. Uh, right. So yes, look head to slash kickstarter if you want to help us with that Kickstarter. We might do some more content try and get that going it would be lovely if we could hit that target because the money is going yes you download that i know i'm trying to hide in the picture <laughs> it's working uh the money is going to uh help keep live comedy going and not to us so um if you feel like just making a small donation to that if you would like to see comedy clubs surviving that'd be great um i hope you've enjoyed this it's been all right isn't it yeah, I mean, Killing Donkey would be an act of uh, kindness, says Fuzzy Dunlop, which is that she. I'm just guessing Fuzzy Dunlop 2 is a, sh is a she. Fuzzy Dunlop 1, I think, is a guy. Let's say they. Uh, they're right. It would be... Donkey wants to die. Help Donkey. I hate that donkey. No one likes the same phrase, mate. I'm not. It's not the same phrase. I hate the donkey. I would let the donkey live. I'd marry the donkey and make its life hell. That is what marriage is all about, isn't it? It's finding someone you don't really like and staying with them just to make them unhappy. I believe so. That's certainly been my experience of marriage. Not mine. I mean, 80% not that, I would say, in my marriage. I'd say only 20% is us 
trying to make each other's life hell. Mostly we're trying to make each other's lives good. Well, that's a beautiful and romantic thing to say. And what a way to end the show, Richard. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It's the oldest guest we've ever had on, even older than Nicholas Parsons, who admittedly only survived uh, you know, a few months <laughs> after he'd been on Rallis. But I don't think it was connected. Um, 128 years old. I doubt we will beat that, but I will aim to beat that myself. We have got uh, Michael Ian Black coming up next week. We've got Stevie Martin coming up the week after. We've got... Uh, John Cairns coming up the week after. We've got Ed Gamble in a few weeks. I'm doing a special with John Robbins. I'll let you know more about that, in which I will be the interview guest. Imagine that. You talking to... You having the answer to the questions. All these terrible. You're the author of that. Well, you know, I've, I've always had other people do it so far. You did one time throw a Kickstarter thing that you interviewed yourself and it was that. Well, hopefully John will be better. I think John will get some good stuff out. Uh, so we'll be discussing my new book, The Problem With Men, which you can pre-order from wherever you get your books. Um, thanks for watching guys thanks for sticking with me through these difficult months thank you to everyone who's managed to subscribe every single month that's just fucking insane do subscribe if you can uh, goodbye Ali you get I want to go in the box get in the box. I don't want to go in the box I want to be free ah! uh, and um Rahalaspa.co.uk slash Kickstarter for the Kickstarter. We'll be back tomorrow with at 8 p.m. with Ali and Herring's Twitch of Fun. I'm very much enjoying those. I hope you are too. Um, the snooker on Mondays has just been fantastic. I'm genuinely fantastic. Um, just on not even on a sarcastic level. The greatest sporting event I think you will have ever see in your life, and that's not hyperbole. Um, all right, kids, take care and. Uh, See you tomorrow if you feel like it. Spread the news. Keep it to yourself. I don't care. Do what you like. Bye. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>